there, my name is Evan and I'm a sales engineer at Retool. Today I'm going to take you through how to build a file explorer on top of Amazon S3 inside of Retool. S3 is a fantastic service for storing all kinds of files and many developers use it for building large-scale production applications. But it can be a little bit difficult for non-technical users to interact with the files uh, because maybe they don't have access to the Amazon console, um, maybe they're not familiar with the interface, and they like something a bit more user-friendly. So we're going to show you how to build that out inside of Retool today. So hopping over into the Retool editor, you'll see that I've already laid out uh, the UI components that I want to use to build this application. So we've got a table where we're going to display all the files in the bucket. We've got a select component we'll use to filter by prefix. We've got buttons for upload and download. And we've even got a place to preview the contents of the file for images and PDFs. So we're going to focus mostly on how the S3 resource that Retool implements makes this possible. So I'm going to open up the query panel and we'll get started with those queries. So you can see that we've already got an S3 resource connected to Retool. We'll take a look at the configuration here so you understand what's going on. So when you create a connection to S3 in Retool, you'll specify the bucket name you want to connect to and then the access key and ID that you'll use to make that connection. Once you test the connection, you're ready to start reading and writing data. So you'll see that unlike a SQL or REST API resource inside of Retool, uh, the S3 resource has a specific set of actions that you can perform. This is all supported by the S3 API, but makes it very easy to figure out what's going on. So in this case, we want to list all the files in a bucket so that we can display them inside of this files table. So we'll leave that as the selection. Let's go ahead and name this. This will be our get files query. All right. So we got back the contents of the query. And if we take a look at the retool state manager, we'll understand exactly what's going on with this query. So get files has a data key. On the data key, there's a contents key, and this contains the array of 3,700 files that we want to list out um, in this table. So what we can do is use JavaScript to point the table to that contents key. So I'm going to open up the file table that I've already created, and if we open the right panel and get into the inspector mode, we'll be able to provide a data property for this table. That's going to de determine what files are populated there. So we'll go to our get files query dot data. And again, we want the contents array to display here. So the next thing we want to do is get the select component wired up with a list of all of the available prefixes so that we can filter this table. Uh, now in Amazon S3, a prefix is really anything that occurs at the beginning of the file key. Um, you can see that the, uh, the form for the resource query provides a property we can pass to filter based on a prefix. Now, in my implementation of S3 in this bucket, prefixes are indicated by uh, anything before a forward slash. So what I want to do now is write uh, some logic that will parse the key names and give me back a list of the unique prefixes that occur so I can put them into this dropdown. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is create a copy of this get files query. Um, the reason is that eventually when we're done with this process, we're going to pass in the selected value into this prefix to filter results property. That's going to change what's returned back by this get files query, but we need a second query that always gives us all available file names. So we'll say get all files is the name of this query, and we'll go ahead and run it. We should see we get back the same results as the previous one. And now what we're going to do is write a JavaScript query. Uh, actually, this will be a JavaScript transformer that will be used to manipulate the data in the get all files contents and return just a sorted array of the available prefixes. So I'm going to pop out my code here to make this a little easier to see. And what we'll do is first off define the data that we want to work with. This data is going to be our get all files dot data dot contents. That's the array of files we want to work with. And the next thing we'll do is define a prefixes array. This is going to be an array of prefixes that we'll sort and we'll be building up throughout this uh, code that we're going to run. And now we'll define a for loop to iterate through each of the files in this data key. So we'll say for, and then we'll define a file constant in this loop. Uh, and it's going to be each of the elements in that data array. And the first thing we'll do is parse out the prefix. So we'll say we're going to define a constant, which is prefix. And the prefix is going to be equal to the file dot split. Actually, in this case, file dot key is what we want to access since that's the data that we're getting here. So file dot key dot split. And we'll split this based on that forward slash. 
and we will take the first element in the resulting array, and that's going to be the prefix. Then we want to check to see if that prefix is already in the prefixes array. So we'll say if prefixes dot includes prefix. In this case, actually, we want to only do this if it doesn't include uh, the new prefix. So we're going to negate that. And basically, we're going to say here if the new prefix is not inside of the prefixes array, then we're going to want to push it into that array. So we'll say prefixes dot push prefix. And finally, we want to return the prefixes array uh, sorted in alphabetical order. So there's our JavaScript. Let's go ahead and test it out. I mean, so you can see we get that array back of all the unique prefixes sorted in alphabetical order. And we'll name this query prefixes. Uh, now transformers, JavaScript transformers inside of Retool will run automatically whenever their inputs change. So that means in this case, whenever this get all files query runs, this transformer is going to run. Now this should only run once because it fires um, when the app loads, but that's good to know that you can use JavaScript transformers to manipulate data that might be changing throughout your usage of the app. So now that we've got our prefixes transformer, let's pass that information into the select component so we can populate it. So in the select, we'll go to mapped mode, we'll choose a data source and we'll choose that prefixes transformer and now we're able to select from this mapper. Also, when we make a selection here, you'll notice that you can clear out that selection. That is an option that is not enabled by default, but you will find it in the adornments under show clear button. Um, we should definitely enable this for this use case because we want to be able to show an unfiltered list of files after the user is filtered by a particular prefix. So now that we've got this prefix select, let's use the state manager to understand what goes into this field when someone makes a selection. So if I choose a prefix, let's take a look at the prefix select component and we'll see that it has a value, which in this case is the selected value, 66. If I clear out that value, then the value that's returned is null. So we're going to want to reference this prefix select dot value to change the behavior of the get files query. So we talked about the prefix to filter results field. We're going to populate that now and we'll say that if the prefix select value is defined, then return prefix select dot value, else return an empty string. And I want to take a moment to talk about the JavaScript that I'm using here because this might be unfamiliar to you, um, but what this is is a really uh, concise conditional statement. Uh, it uses a ternary operator, and the way this works is it's basically a one line if else statement. The way that the statement works is it evaluates the expression before the question mark. If it returns boolean true, then it will return this expression that comes after the question mark. And if the value is evaluated to be false, it will return the value that comes after the colon. So in this case, this is saying if prefix select dot value is defined or is not null, then return that value. Otherwise, return an empty string. And that's going to be really important because uh, the way this filter works is it will show all files, but only if an empty string is provided. So we can update that logic, and now let's test it out. So if I were to select the prefix, we'll see that the query reruns. We filter down just to show files with that prefix. If I clear this out, it's going to show all the files again. OK, so we've got our uh, filter by prefix uh, logic implemented. Now let's move on to wiring up our upload and download buttons. So we'll do the download button first, because this one's pretty straightforward. Um, if we make another query for S3, we'll see that um, the actions include a download file option. So we've been using the list all files in a bucket up till now, but we're going to download that file from S3. And all we have to do is tell S3 what's the file key that we want to get. So the idea here is that the user is going to pick a file using uh, the table, so by clicking on a row, and then the download button will download that file. So what we can do now is reference the state manager to understand how we'll access the selected key from this file table. So if we take a look at the file table, we'll see that it has a selected row key, and this gives us access to the information contained in that record. So this key is what we can pass through to download the file. So I'm going to go ahead and write double curly braces, and we'll look at the file table.selectedRow.data, specifically at the key. And so now it's going to pass through the file key to download. So we'll name this query, and we'll call it 
uh, download file. And then we need to wire up our download button. So if we select the button, we can use the event handler uh, framework on the button. The way this works is whenever the button is clicked, we can execute a query. And in this case, we will be executing the download file query, which is selected by default because it's the last one that we made. So let's test that out. We'll select a file and click on download and that should kick off a file download and we got the file here in our browser. Great. The next file uh, operation we wanna use is the upload button. And this one's a little more complicated because the upload button is actually a special component here. Um, this is a file uploader that I've already implemented. You can see it in the list of components. This is the file button. And a file button allows you to upload one or more files. In this case, I've chosen a single file and then do something with the resulting data. So when you click on the button, it's gonna open up the file explorer. In this case, I'll go ahead and upload this driver's license file. And now that information is contained in the data model for the upload button. So again, back to the state manager to see how that works. So if we look at our upload button, we'll see that it has two keys that are very helpful to us. The first is a value key. And this is an array of all of the file values that we uploaded in base64 encoded string format. So this image we just uploaded, that's the, the string data here that we wanna store. We also have access to this files key, which gives us information about the metadata that we have uploaded. So in this case, we can get the file name and the file type, other information that we need to fill out the upload form. So now that we have this information, let's go ahead and create a resource query to upload data to S3. So the action type that we'll choose is upload data, and let's fill out the form. So we're gonna see that we need to find a, provide an upload file name, and we, of course we can grab that from our upload button component data model. So we'll go to upload button dot files, and because it's only a single file upload, we'll access uh, the zeroth element in that array. And then we will select the name of that file. So that's going to give us access to the file name. The next thing we'll do is provide the actual data, which is going to reference the upload button uh, dot value array. Again, we'll take the zeroth element of the array, and that's going to give us access to the base64 encoded string value that we need to upload. So we'll save the query and we'll name it. This is going to be upload file. And let's wire it up to our button event handler. So this event handler is a little different because on click, it's gonna launch the file browser on our, our system, but there is another event that we can bind to, which is the change event. So on file change, we can take an action. In this case, we'll control a query. It'll be the upload file query. And finally, I wanna set up some uh, success handlers on this upload file query because when the file is uploaded, it may have a new unique prefix that we wanna populate in the select. It also might be displayed in the file table. So what that means is we need to execute the get all files and the get files queries to rerun uh, the logic that populates these components. So we can do that using the event handler framework on the upload file query. So when this query runs successfully, we can control another query. In this case, we're gonna control get files and we're gonna do a second event handler to re-trigger get all files. So that should be ready to go and let's test it out. So we will upload a file. Again, it's gonna be our JPEG. Once it's uploaded, you'll see that it triggers the upload file query. There's our successful upload. And we can see also that the get files and get all files queries we ran as well. So that's great. Our file upload and download buttons are ready to go. The last thing we need to do is set up image and PDF previewing based on the file that's selected in the table. So in order to do this, we're gonna to have to write another resource query because up till now, we've only been getting file metadata from S3. We haven't actually been getting the file itself um, unless it's via that download process. So we're gonna open up our query panel again. We'll make a resource query. And this time, instead of listing files, we will read a file from S3. Now the piece of information we have to pass here again is the S3 file key. And we'll get it the same way we did for our download operation by referencing the file table.selectedrow.data.key. So we'll name this get file, and we can see that the file contents that come back are helpful for us to populate that preview. So if we look at our get file query, we'll see it has a data key, and the data we want is the body. That's the base64 encoded string that we can display in our image and PDF previews. So let's fill out our image preview first. 
and the image URL accepts a base64 encoded string as well as a, as a path to an image. So we'll go to our get file dot data dot body. And that's going to display a preview of the image. You can also do the same thing for a PDF. So if we select a PDF, that will use our PDF component here, and we can pass that same base64 encoded string into the PDF viewer. So we've got our image preview and our PDF preview working. The last thing I want to do is automate toggling between these two tabs, because right now our image component can't display that PDF and our PDF component can't display the image. So we have to switch between these two views uh, programmatically. So if we look at the settings for this tabbed container, we can see it has two views, an image view and a PDF view, and there's a possibility to specify a default view. So if this field evaluates to image, then it will select the image tab automatically by default. And if it selects PDF, then it will default to PDF. So what I can do is write a JavaScript expression, which will look at the file extension that's selected in this table and toggle to the correct view of this tabbed container. So I'm going to open up JavaScript mode. Again, we'll write double curly braces. And this time, we need to do a, a Boolean expression that looks at the file extension of the selected file. So we'll start by going to the file table selected row dot data and we'll access the key. And let's go ahead and split that key based on the uh, dot at the end of the file name. And the second element in that array is going to be the file name that's selected. So you can see this now is evaluating to PDF. Um, if I were to select JPEG, this expression would evaluate as JPEG. And now what I want to do is check to see if this value is PDF, because if it is, then again, using the ternary operator, I want to return the string PDF. That's going to correspond with the PDF tab. And if it's not, then I know I'm working with an image. So you can see the string now is returning image. If I toggle to a PDF, it's returning PDF. And that is now why we're able to automatically switch between the tabs in this tabbed container when we select a new uh, file. And the last thing I'll do with this UI is um, hide this tab row, this header, because I actually don't want users to toggle to the wrong file type and see a broken experience. So if they don't need to click it, we can go ahead and hide that header row uh, by toggling off show header. And that should do exactly what we want. So we've now got our file preview. Um, it's going to toggle to the correct tab. All right, well, that's an end-to-end -end explanation of how we can build a really simple UI uh, to manage files in S3. Um, again, sorting, filtering, uploads and downloads. Um, this, all, this all works very well for non-technical users, again, who might not be able to use the AWS console to interact with S3 files. All right, well, I hope you found this demo useful and look forward to seeing you next time.